Hi guys, this is Shannon from the Clay Studio. Today I'm going to teach you how I paint figures onto clay using underglazes as well as a precision decorator. Before we get started, I'm going to talk about what I'll be using today. I have Cover Coats by Duncan, that's my preferred underglaze, as well as my precision decorator and bamboo brushes. You might notice that my Underglazers are not in their original containers. I put them in these glass jars because the original container they come in has a very narrow opening so I find it hard to mix things up and also you end up not picking up a lot of underglaze once it's empty. With these bigger jars I find I can really load the brush up a lot and adjust the amount I have. I do have bigger jars but often it's harder to mix up your underglaze so you end up with kind of uneven color I find. So I'm getting started here on this first one. I'm going to do just a singular figure um, and we're really going to focus on how she is balanced when, as we start. You might notice there's a little bit of a line drawing uh, from a, it's just my dirty brush as I sketch out the figure. When I'm working with a figure that is taking up all of the vertical or horizontal space on a canvas, it's important to make sure that neither the hands or the feet get cut off and I really did want her to dominate this field and go all the way to the edge so I did want to map that out first. All of her weight is basically balanced on her left hip and her left hand. As a result, you're going to see that um, that means that her feet can be fairly relaxed and it's going to limit that range of motion in both her hips and uh, that right arm can only go, you know, so far before uh, you would you'd have to bend your, your elbow and lose some of that strength in her left hand. So that those are considerations that need to be made as you are composing the, the figure. So another thing to think about is, you know, what else is going to be on this canvas. I'd originally wanted her to be paired with either another person or an animal. I've opted to do a black dog, even though it will be actually just a deep purple dog. <laughs> um, so I started to sketch something out here in underglaze. I did not like the positioning because I thought, I've, my original thought was to put you know, the head kind of level and on the other side of the canvas, but I found that made it too, it made the whole, the whole thing look like too balanced and I wanted to give it, you know, it needs a little bit more asymmetry to keep visual interest. So I have, here I've, you know, finally decided on a position and also a size for that dog. Um, I've, you know, brought down his head. Uh, they are looking in the, in, kind of like at each other which also is going to help with that composition to keep the eye kind of circulating around the the picture. You might have noticed that I scratched out where the eyes are supposed to go on that dog. That's to give that sun gold yellow a fighting chance against that uh, deep purple to be able to actually show up against that deep purple. Duncan recommends that you put three coats of underglaze down so that you can get a solid coat of color however I like to do two just so that I get a little variation and the terracotta underneath kind of competes with the the colors I find that that is just a really beautiful effect not so much I wouldn't call it a watercolor effect per se but I I think that it lends a lot of visual interest especially as um on some of the edges you'll see that just the the color just kind of like fades out uh, and it gives it a really nice effect so as I start working with this precision decorator, uh, you may or may not have seen something like this before. I prefer this over those those decorators that are kind of just like a bottle with a special cap on it. I find that long hours in the studio with that little bottle decorator, um, <laughs> they really hurts the wrist after a while. I find this a lot more comfortable just like grip wise. It's, it's not as severe of a, a hold you have to have on it which is a huge benefit when it when it comes to if you're going to be doing this for like you know six hours at a time you really are looking for something that's not going to put a big strain on your body. I'm just going to touch her up so she looked a little angry when I put down that 
uh, initial eyebrow. So I just went ahead and scratched out that part of the black and then just touched up the blue again in those areas, especially in the face. I'm going to move on now to a little bit of a more complicated design. This is going to be multiple figures kind of holding hands and dancing. You might have also noticed that I have divided this plate in half. I've kind of defined that with like a little a little line that I just drew with a little bit of water. And I'm going to start on the central figure because she's going to be the lowest most figure where her foot is is going to define where everyone else is going to end up putting their feet. Uh, you know, I'm kind of giving the illusion that they're in a circle without actually painting the whole circle. This is another uh, really fun opportunity if you have multiple plates to decorate, you might want to consider, you know, why can't the figures dance on to another plate and you <laughs> just keep the party going. So I'm getting to work here now on the skeleton to her her left, so this is kind of like a interesting kind of transitional play I think I'm just being inspired by the fact that it is like springtime now and um it is a time of transitioning from kind of like the dead winter into the the really vi vibrant summer so that's kind of what I'm <laughs> thinking about right now um as I'm working and then these two figures that are opposite of each other are probably the most difficult to, th to think about because I'm also I'm not only worried about making sure that they are balanced uh, and don't look like they're just going to fall over, as well as, as making sure that that dividing line stays accurate. And you can see here that, like, I've also um, kind of balanced out this plate color-wise by kind of, um, just with diagonals, you know, I have two different greens on the left and right, two different yellows on the left and right, and two different blues down the middle with, like, warmer colors for the hair. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I really like how this one turned out as well. The The fun thing about if you draw uh, groups of people together and like holding hands, you can use the tension in the arms to, to give figures balance that they normally wouldn't have. So, um, especially if you look in these back figures, if, if they were by themselves, they would just look like they were tripping. They wouldn't necessarily look like they were dancing. Um, and that's kind of like the power of <laughs> having a bunch of figures at one time down on the field. I also like to try to um, give a little variation. And again, like it's just like the suggestion of a face or something like that. You don't have to get crazy, especially when you're working with underglaze. Um, I find that it's hard to be really exacting with this medium. Alright, so that's it for me. I'm just going to finish up this plate. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are staying safe out there and have a great one.